my house hackettes army who entered the keep as if they belonged there. Riding through the servers of guardians, so true. Where's the wide hat proudly cyber wrangler through and I'm willing to fund to do great things. I'm willing to pay all cash, but I'm only valuing your company at four times revenue. Hi there, it's Ron Gula from Gula Tech Adventures. And in this week, I'm sitting down with Cindy Gula. Cindy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Always great to be here with you. We are going to go through the animation videos that we've been putting together for the channel. Now, I recently extracted all the animations from the interviews and, and sort of my talking head videos, created a separate playlist on, uh, on YouTube. And for folks who haven't seen it, I thought it'd be kind of interesting to go through them and have Cindy and I chat back and forth about uh, why we did the videos, what we liked about them, and so on. What do you think, Cindy? Well, I think you're quite generous when you say we and you include that in me. So, I mean, from a standpoint of the ideas, we certainly have fun talking about the ideas, but, you know, I've been very impressed with you putting them together in the animation. Well, I appreciate the kind words, and there's an editorial process here where we come up with characters, storylines, and so on. So the first video that we're going to talk about is the VC 101 exhibits. I'm going to start playing this here. Well, startup founders and, uh, not make mistakes when they exhibit. We'll turn this down out. a little bit. So for the past 25 years, I've been involved with so this is one of the first videos we did. The tech is not really as advanced as uh, as I'd like, but um, but for the most part, it kind of gets the uh, gets the job done here. Um, Cindy, what do you think of uh, what we were trying to do in this uh, marketing video here? Well, we had just come back from RSA and been frustrated with seeing all of the same words, but not understanding what the companies were doing. So this really helped. Um, formulate what we've seen in good booths at, at uh, shows and not so good booths. And hopefully some people got a good idea of maybe what not to do. But, you know, coming up with the mousetraps was a lot of fun too. I was really happy with how this came out. And there's a lot of marketing people who said they needed to watch this. Now, my skills have gotten a little bit better, right? This is dated. It's very old stuff. But one of the things I realized is that you know, we can't go to a conference and take a picture of somebody's booth and say how good or bad it is, because that's kind of unfair. But being able to create an environment like this was uh, was really kind of, of, of useful. Now, we uh, we expanded upon that, and we went to um, another concept for startup companies, which is how to panel. And very similarly, you know, I can't go to a conference and watch one of our portfolio companies and say, oh, look what a great job or a horrible job this person did. So again, dated technology here from a certain point of view, but uh, we, you know, we, we kind of conveyed a lot in this. Yeah, it uh, is really interesting to come back from being on a panel and um, experiencing it, but then watching somebody else's panel. Um, and you know, it is very stark difference with what's a good panel, what's not. So hopefully people get a good idea that preparation um, really does matter because if somebody's going to spend their time to come out and see you on a panel, then you know hopefully you've done your job to make it worth their while. So I knew we were kind of hitting something with uh, these videos, and we went back down to. I'm, I'm sure this is frustrating for people trying to watch me in the default view here and whatnot. And we really wanted to try to convey how um, basically you know the whole venture capital world worked. And we had come up with something called the five slide pitch deck. And this was a new type of technology that we were playing around with here. I think, what, what do you think of that? Did I capture my likeness <laughs> here? <laughs> it's so creepy to see digital Ron on this. Let's let's see. So that's digital Ron, um, real, real Ron, <laughs> digital Ron. I prefer real Ron. Yeah, did, real Ron and, and, and so on. But I was switching from a technology. I, I kind of wait. I lift a little bit of weights. That's that's not the way it works. But um, we had this thing called the five slide pitch deck, and and we use this in almost every one of our pitches that that we get. What problem do you solve? How do you solve it? Show me some proof. What's your ask? And then what does victory look like? And again, we can't like just sit here and say, look how bad this deck is, or look how bad this pitch was. So I decided to come up with this five slide pitch deck competition. Yeah, it was a lot of fun just figuring out who was going to be the um, <laughs> characters. My favorite was Bigfoot. But it's really difficult because you got to make 
things like this a little fun to watch at the same time of getting your point across. And so hopefully, you know, this takes a little bit more of the thou shalt, you will, and 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 helps people embrace the idea behind it and uh, allow that critical criticism to come through to, to really improve their uh, chances when they pitch. And again, it's, I don't want to pick on bad pitch decks, but people always ask, how do I learn? I'm like, everybody here makes a big mistake and they, it, it really takes a lot to um, basically see what's going on here. And a lot of people have learned from this. We're really happy to, to, to help out there. So we started, um, so still sticking on sort of the, the, the venture capital side. Um, another thing that happens with, uh, with sort of our daily lives here is, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do a meeting with our companies and we'll be like, wow, that didn't go well. And maybe it was an HR conversation, maybe it was a, uh, a technology sales conversation. But in this case, we had a, a meeting with somebody and we had a really rough roadmap meeting. And I think we came up with this idea of having the roadmap warrior. And this is probably one of our more popular videos in that, uh, I mean, Cindy, you and I have both lived this where we've had developers come to us and say they want to change the roadmap, customers say they want to pay for features and and uh, and so on. So this really connected with a lot of people. Well, yeah, and I definitely think or know that Ron had a lot of fun putting this together. Um, but demonstrating visually the frustration mm -hmm. that we see, I mean, it's real. A lot, all of these are real. And it's funny because the comments we've gotten from this video is, oh my gosh, I almost fell out of my seat when X, because they've lived that. And again, this is meant to take down the criticism, the criticalness, and really demonstrate you're not alone when these, these things happen to you. Take a look at it and really embrace it for what it is. And, and hopefully we can help people fall, uh, avoid pitfalls that we've either seen, experienced, or been a part of ourselves. So this, this next one, I think, was kind of interesting. We switched to a new technology. We've, we've been using Blender and then a bit of Unreal in this thing called iClone. But um, we switched to this technology where we're using this company called Replicant now. And I wanted to kind of convey what it was like as you know switching from being a founder to an investor. And more than once, we'll have conversations with other investors where you know, we have these terms like, you know, self-limiting CEO and, uh, you know, just, you know, and that's not necessarily a bad term, but it's, it's, it's interesting. So I wanted to have four venture capitalists sit around a, a table here at RSA and talking about their, uh, their portfolio companies. What did you think of this one, Cindy? Yeah. So board meetings are great when everybody understands the reason of having a board meeting. And sometimes the founders get the idea that, they're being watched or they are somehow under the microscope. Well, they are, but their performance is being mo measured more than their what their company is doing. It's everything about the leadership and, and how you run that. So I guess understanding the dynamic between um, a founder, um, co-founders, and the investors at a board meeting and what really is needed in a board meeting um, is, is important. It's hard to get right. Um, being on both sides of, of the seat, I'm not sure I would be a spectacular founder right out of the gate, but in listening and, and being able to view things like this gives me a better idea that I need to learn more about really what that relationship is if I'm not happy with the board meetings. So once we started, uh, you know, sort of doing these videos, I wanted to start doing these vignettes for almost every major interview and 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 what we did. So one of our portfolio companies is uh, is Scythe, <laughs> and and a big part of what Scythe does is they just kind of assume uh, breaching. So we came up with this sort of Star Trek enabled thing where the crew of the spaceship, the USS Scythe, you know, the, the actually I think it was the GTA Scythe, right? It's always fun to do that. And they're sitting here talking about, you know, how they have to invade the galaxy and pretend. And this this is basically what, you know, the whole CTEM uh, market does and cites, you know, one of one of the leaders in that. Yeah. Again, having these conversations of how do we get this across in a in a parallel universe way to make things applicable, but in a in a way that it's um, different than what our marketing our technical jargon says, um, and really get to the point of the matter of why th some of the things that we do, especially in cybersecurity, are really important, but they're really boring or sometimes even real hard to understand why we're doing all this. So 
we have a lot of fun um, talking about uh, videos and vignettes to 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 try to get that across in a different way and reach a different market. Another uh, sort of thing we like to push, uh, you know, from a cyber point of view, is this concept of separation of data, protect your data. And we were watching the House of Dragons, and I said, I think I can do a uh, House of Dragons themed, you know, video that talks about the realities of just, you know, how cyber hygiene, you're still kind of connected to hostile people versus a full separate, you know, enclave and stuff was was there. I had a lot of fun making this and uh, it, it really uh, kind of shows, you know, kind of what you can do from a computer these days. It always makes me laugh when I look at the king and look at his little legs. But for <laughs> uh, getting, again, the point across here, because everybody doesn't live every experience of this um, video, but one video or one of the experience probably hits home and and allows the point to to really sink in to understand, oh, that's what that means, or this is why it's important. Um, and again, you know, it's always good to have fun. <laughs> uh, another one that was really popular was also back to one of these VC 101 videos is this concept, and we we always deal with this with our with our founders, is when should they exit? And if they have a company that's starting out, you know, I like to say that's sometimes, like when we started Network Security Wizards, I thought we sold that like in 15, 15, 16 months. And I thought we were gonna do that every 15 months to years. Um, but a lot of our companies, you know, they just really face all these challenges when they're going through their life cycle of starting a company. Yeah, I remember when we started Tenable, we said, well, gee, if it took 16 to 18 months to sell uh, Network Security Wizards, well, then this one might be three years. <laughs> and that was our thought. And every time we had to pick our head up and say, what's realistic? Is it realistic that we're going to sell? Or do we have something here? How are we going to continue to build? We had a fantastic team at Tenable um, in the beginning, and it just made everything easy. And the decisions were right at the time. And, you know, we did venture down into certain areas, which we ultimately walked away from. But we had to learn. And learning that really... Um, allowed us to to see a better future or what our trajectory really could be, and uh, and it was exciting. And I was really happy how this came out because you know this teed up probably about a twenty minute conversation I do talking head Ron that just talks about all the different stages companies can go through and all the different outcomes they had. What inspired me for this this is obviously Matrix Two, you know the scene where uh, you know Neo and Sarah are walking down the hall with the, looking for the key master on the way to see the uh, the Oracle. And uh, I just thought it would be a really good good analogy for, um, you know, founders who are looking for their quote-unquote uh, exit. The only thing about this video is any one of those doors could be the right exit. Oh, absolutely. It's not a bad thing, Exactly. Right? Yeah. So so this video is was definitely, you know, we had to decide, well, sometimes it is the right door to make an exit early versus, you know, going to IPO. But it's the iteration and, and discussion and activity that leads you down that path. Now we have a whole separate AI playlist where I've talked a lot about regulating AI and fearing AI and so on. And I had a lot of fun with this video as well. Uh, these are some, a, a couple here and it's a routine police officer stopping them. And of course uh, their robot is, uh, is an unregistered AI robot. And I just thought this was really enjoyable. What do you think about the AI videos and topics we've covered so far? Yeah, this has been a lot of fun to have conversations because we're not in it. It's not something we've experienced. It's something we are also seeing in the future. So demonstrating the where this could go is, is actually um, been a lot of fun as well. Um, one of the things is during conversations about AI, um, we said no named AI was ever, you know, ended in any good, like HAL. Colossus. Colossus. Like, so don't name your AI. I mean, <laughs> I think Star Trek got it right when they, they say computer and put it in its place, knowing it is a computer, it is a tool to be utilized. Um, but as society, and we, we just like to personify everything. What I think is ironic is a lot of these visualizations and animations, they're all AI driven. Yeah. You know, like I, I'm not, I don't have a team, but I don't have anybody that helps me with this stuff, right? So I'm using off the, off the table shelf tools and, you know, that, that sort of thing. So it's definitely, uh, definitely a lot of fun. Now we started getting into um, this concept of doing more cyber uh, companies and, you know, we were watching the boys and I said, I think I can do some superhero stuff uh, based on cyber, 
names. And so we came up with the Superman with sort of critical infrastructure and the the Lex Luthor here is is, uh, is is Blackout. Now, we've had a lot of fun with these videos. They've been quite popular. We've got a couple of them to talk about here. Yeah, it's pretty fun, too, because when we come up with a superhero name, then it's, is this a superhero or a supervillain? And, and how are we going to best uh, demonstrate that in a video? Um, many times, we could argue the heroes were the villains and the villains were the heroes. And I'm sure there's plenty of people out there in cyberspace and who have been living through the uh, cyber years of, of growing up into it, whereas seeing the villains on both sides. Um, but my favorite on this one was absolutely the squirrel. <laughs> That's great. Um, one of the things that we we talk a lot about with uh, both investing and from a um, you know cybersecurity point of view is that a lot of times when we're investing in companies, you know, the pro what problem do you solve? How do you solve it? And so on. So the second video we did in the series was one where sort of inspired by the Deadpool 2 where Deadpool's interviewing people to be part of his his, uh, his superhero gang is that we wanted people to um, try out to be part of this collective defense league. And every one of these superheroes that tries out has a weakness and a strength, which I just thought we just had a lot of fun coming up with that stuff. Well, as you can tell, we definitely watch a lot of TV, um, big on superheroes, monster movies, things like that. But um, yeah, this was a lot of fun because, again, it's getting very difficult to buy products. Um, we think there's a lot of snake oil out there just from a point of view of promising, over-promising, under-delivering. But the importance of these products is is so important that we can't get it wrong because we can't lose the tr the trust of the people utilizing them. So this is really important to understand that there is positives and negatives to a lot of the efforts that are going on in, in uh, cyber, um, and and be critical and ask those and be able to to discern which one is going to be better for your situation because there's not a one size fit all. There's uh, some of the feedback I've gotten on this video is that there's so much sort of cyber investor, cyber vendor inside baseball. Like every one of these weaknesses and strengths is really interesting. Like I, this lock-in guy, right? He's like, I'll make I'll make all your IT problems go away, but you know if you ever leave, I'll effing <laughs> it'll cost you, right? It'll cost you. So it's it's uh, it's fun stuff. I love and, the size of her sword. Yeah, uh, well, we'll, well, you know that's uh, that's all good. The, uh, the last guy here, I was just really kind of, I thought I was going to get a lot more negative feedback on this. This guy is called Cloud Strike. And obviously that, you know, pertains to maybe a vendor that, you know, sometimes uh, protects you and keeps you from being protected and, and so on. So that's a lot of fun. Well, one thing I do want to say is I think the intent is good. And that's one thing that I really like about the cyber industry, um, the products out there, people who work in it, why more people should be in this is because the intent is us versus them. And it, it ultimately, it's really about protecting- Them being Russia and China and evil Ex ransomware people. <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, it, it is, it, it's it's a great industry um, and, I, and I'm happy I landed here. So a lot of these videos are teeing up things. The cyber tryouts was a tee up to interview Tom Quinn, the CISO at T. Rowe Price. And uh, this one we teed up, we did an interview with Chris Bang, who's been, you know, really breaking some amazing cybersecurity stories. And I actually asked Chris, I'm like, can I make you sort of the Clark Kent of Superman for critical infrastructure? So we have him set up here where he is, uh, you know, his editor comes in here, Rose Watkins, and she's like, bang, bang, you got to get me an interview with critical infrastructure. So, you know, and that just tees up a whole bunch of fun, uh, fun things here. So, of course, the video uh, interview with Chris is just phenomenal because we talk about a lot of stuff, but this is just a lot of fun. And and uh, so it was great to, to get this out of here. Yeah, and... <laughs> It's so, you know, I mean, how old is Superman and Clark Kent? I mean, we grew up with it from a standpoint. So to to really be able to pay homage to that and and apply it to to now to today, um, and just make making the superheroes real people is also the important message that might not be um, translating is saying that behind all of the technology, behind all of the effort, they're real people that are trying to do and solve real hard problems. And, um, you know, I appreciate their efforts and I really hope, you know, we're going to have to continue to do this because cyber is not going away as far as the need. One of the things that we like to talk about in this, this, uh, this channel is just the concept of what really is going on in cyber. 
we ended up interviewing Jason Kitka, who's the head of product over at Automox, and he was one of the initial leaders over at the Cyber National Mission Force. I wanted to do a video where folks from the CNMF you know, actually had to fight, uh, you know, a superhero, a super villain, cyber super villain, you know, during a, during an outage. And, and this was just lots and lots of fun because we have people using the, the, the Ghidorah, Ghidra, Ghidra, you know, uh, reverse whatever. engineers. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, they end up fighting, uh, LLM man, which is, uh, you know, a guy who used to be an LLM, but now he's a man, he's LLM, LLM man, man, which is, which is hilarious. <laughs> Again, you're, ability to animate this is just getting really off the charts um, and, and, is, and is impressive. So even if you don't watch all the videos, watching your evolution from where you started animating to, to now is, is really impressively fun um, for us. But uh, again, you know, Mission Force, like all these things just seem like somebody else's problem. It's so far out there. It's not my problem. Um, but there's these um, incidences impact everyday people, and therefore it is important um, to understand and and support and make sure that you know when there's little things that you can do to to prevent ransomware or intrusions to to step up and do them. So MFA is not a a bad word. Like it shouldn't you shouldn't be resisting it upgrading, shouldn't be resisting. So um, hopefully, you know, this will trickle out to people who are not already um, in in the camp of rah-rah cyber. All right, for this next one, I'm going to turn the, uh, the video <laughs> the sound back up. So this was funny. So Mark Sox, he used AI to, I got to turn that back down there. So he used uh, AI to write this song and to also come up with the actual audio. I asked if I could take that video or the audio file and uh, basically make it, uh, you know, make a music video here. And this is just a lot of fun. So again, a little creepy, a little bit of Uncanny Valley, but uh, a lot of people really like the camera work on this. And of course, the song is just phenomenal. Yeah, the song is phenomenal. I'd be walking, you know, hearing some music and you know, a store or whatever. And it just brings me back to this song. And I'm like, I can imagine hearing this song on Muzak. But um, again, this was a lot more Ron trying out different things and, and such. So it's like, uh, I, if I was doing this today, I wouldn't have released that. There's a lot of just bad animation there and stuff like that. But well, maybe there's so much a, fun stuff. There may be a new version of this one coming out at some point. <laughs> and I got the logos in there for a couple of our companies, NSA, CISA, and that kind of stuff. That's a lot of fun. And then uh, we've done some full length sort of um, sort of videos. We did one uh, again on the AI side, uh, security advice from the uh, from the future, where um, you know we've got sort of the Star Trek crew, and uh, they're going back in time, and uh, they are basically trying to figure out what these signals are, and they create a bunch of Windows computers from 2024, and they instantly connect to the internet and get infected, so they abduct somebody from the RSA. Hilarious, right? It, Hilarious. It, yeah, and this is again a lot of fun to see to to try to predict or see what's going to happen in the future. But you know, future looking back, like if we look back twenty years ago, we can't believe some of the people that would say, "Well, I have a firewall. That's all I need," and thinking that was security um, enough security. I mean, again, so we're wondering what's going to happen twenty years from now, where we are going to be, and and what the state of today is going to look like. So. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. It's it certainly gets people thinking. So, um, hopefully, again, this will this will serve somebody somewhere. I think the most ambitious uh, video we did was this. Uh, I, I animated this short called "The Right to Read," which is something that Richard Stallman wrote, and he's a big pro open source uh, uh, advocate. And uh, he wrote this short story that basically said, "Look, because of copyright law." almost everything from compilers to computers are gonna be licensed in the future. And I had the thought that with AI being so dependent upon the data that it's used to train the AI, that we might go right back to those days. If you look at things like the New York Times lawsuit against open AI and, and stuff like that. So this is sort of a dystopian future, but this was a lot of fun as well. Yeah, to be honest, I'd never heard of the story. Ron actually had to explain this to me a couple times <laughs> with respect to what he was trying to get across. But 
once you sit down and watch this and and then do in your head play along the future how things are going to to uh, materialize this actually becomes really stark and uh and interesting so you know we've got to write regulations we've got to figure out what and how and why ai exists and um i think shorts like this and stories like this that were written how long ago Oh, this was this was nineties, eighties, nineties, early nineties, right? So, which is good. I okay. just want to point out this is the evil software protection agency of this <laughs> of this of this story, which they have to license all the software, which is uh, which is great. Um, so yeah, so those are the main videos we've done. So kind of we're recording this in um, we're recording this in uh, October October of twenty twenty four. Thank you so much. So <laughs> so look, every one of these videos it tees up sort of either an interview with somebody that I think is really interesting, one of our portfolio companies, or me talking on a on a topic. But if you want to just watch the animation videos, we have a whole separate channel, whole separate uh, uh, a playlist for uh, for that. So Cindy, what kind of videos would you like to see in the future? Oh boy, you didn't warn me you're going to ask me <laughs> that one. I do like the future videos, um, because getting what's going to happen right, is, it, it matters. It matters to us investing in companies who are starting and trying to solve hard problems. It matters in the, with existing companies where what they're going to be delivering and how they're going to be delivering it um, in the future. But it really, videos that you've been able to put out there hopefully are drawing more people into understanding cyber and and what I like to call data care because it's not going away. It's only going to continue to grow. And so we need more people involved and more ideas, diversity of thought, diversity of background, diversity of how other people approach technology. I mean, we can't just keep building technology for technologists. We've got to get technology for people who are not as savvy. I think that's great. Cindy, thank you very much for joining me today. If people want to see more videos like this, give us a subscribe, give us a like, give us a connect with us over on uh, on LinkedIn. Again, if you're a startup tech founder, check out the VC 101 videos, which is all everything about tech founder from naming your company all the way to the, the exiting your, your company. And of course, if you're in the industry, you know, we have a lot of content on cyber that we like to talk about and, and animate. Cindy, thanks again. Great to be here. I'm Ron Gula. Have a great week. Riding through the servers of Guardians, so true. Where's a white hat proudly cyber wrangler through and through? With each click and clatter, he's dusting off the hacks. No digital marauder can slip through the cracks. Whistle through the web space, a lasso in his grill. A keystroke cowboy on an unbreachable bull trail. No more secrets on the old mainframe. Encrypted whispers on the cyber plane. Trying to catch the ghost in the wires, pixel and the code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Battling the breaches on a firewall's edge Saw a cyber cowboy with a silicone blitz Said, hey, Mr. Hacker, can you safeguard too? Oh, oh, oh. With his ten-gallon hat and his keystroke mud He tips his brim and winks as the nest locked tight On broadband Trails. Defender of the data in the wild, wired west, where cyber outlaws put his codes to the test. But with each bite and bug, he just tips his screen. He's a hero in the web of neon lights, Silicon Sheriff with digital rights in the Valley of Cables. He stays. Trojans fall to his head.